Yo, what's up guys? Hope you're all doing well. I've had a few days with the new update now, and by far my favorite thing to do is fly the Nightbird. They made a few changes to it, the miniguns are a lot more accurate, but they do overheat a lot faster as well. In this game, I played really well. I think it might even be the best game of 2042 I've ever played in terms of technique and just overall mechanics. We're going to go over it along with the new playstyle these miniguns require. So firstly, I think I've found the best way to start matches is to kind of just kill all the transport vehicles. On this map especially, you don't really want them back capping you as they're doing right now, so I'm desperately trying to stop this from happening. And I'll always make sure that they don't really get on your side of the map, because as you can see, this map has a massive wall down the middle. This wall is actually really, really good cover. It's very useful, but there is not that much cover anywhere else. I mean, there's little bits of cover and you can make it work, but the wall is by far the best cover to hide behind. So at the start of the match, what I'm doing right now, I'm just trying to take control of C-Flag, and I'm making sure that they're not really getting past it. I'm trying to kill as many infantry as I can. And at the start of every single game, especially on the other side of the map, I will try to kill all the transport vehicles and those little buggies because they can easily get to your back flag pretty quickly. So once this flag is finally under control, then I will start peeking over the wall. But for now, they actually have it capped. And I believe this little rock area here is where you can spawn for this flag. I'm not sure where the spawns are on Renewal because I haven't really played it that much yet. Honestly, Renewal still isn't a great map at all, but it is a pretty good map to fly the helicopter on. Just due to that wall and how open it is. I mean, a lot of the maps that are bad for infantry also happen to be very good heli maps. It's not always like this, but in this case, I definitely would say that's the case. I've also got the AGMs on in this gameplay. I don't really use pods that much at all, but in this case, now with the new update, I think the pods aren't very useful anymore. They did get a slight buff apparently, like they accidentally buffed the pods, they're more accurate now. But the miniguns kill so fast, they actually just have a faster time to kill in general. So if you do master them, you're going to be killing people a lot quicker. The only thing you have to watch out for is the overheat. The other thing is that there's a lot of ground vehicles which can really threaten you. Luckily though, the AGMs are actually really good against all these vehicles that counter the helicopter. And especially if you have someone on the side seat with Liz missiles, you can pretty much 1v1 any ground vehicle. And even if you don't have that, just being able to put like 60 damage on a ground vehicle is very, very useful. It will definitely deter them almost every single time. Whereas with pods, someone can basically just harass you with an AA. They can literally just hold W at you and there's almost nothing you can do. So definitely run the AGMs if you can. And I'd also recommend just forcing yourself to use the miniguns because as you can see, it is very rewarding once you do get good with them. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the new playstyle I'm kind of using in the helicopter. So, I think it's changed a lot. Uh, before, I used to use a bit more roll and I used to play quite close range with the miniguns. Now, in the current state with the Nightbird, they are a lot more accurate. You can dial the engagement range right back and you can still be extremely accurate and almost have a faster time to kill if you get that little bit further back because of the way that the convergence works on the miniguns. More or less, the miniguns on either side of the helicopter and there's a point in range where they cross over with each other, and that range is the optimal range to fire the helicopter at. I don't know exactly where this is, but there's just a bunch of ranges where it seems to work really well. And then being too close, you kind of only get one minigun beam, and then at too far of a range, you get a lot of spread. So you have to really just dial that in and feel it out for yourself, but there definitely is a kind of mid-range where you want to be at. Now, while I'm playing at this range, you probably notice that I'm not really being too evasive with my movement, and that is kind of by intention. So firstly, at least with this current update of the game, both myself and a friend of mine, Assault, who also uses the same control scheme as me, we both noticed that aiming with your roll just does seem to hurt the accuracy a lot, and it is a lot better just to aim with the rudder mostly, which is a lot easier to do if you use the same control scheme as me. I have a YouTube video explaining it, I'll link it in the description, but I definitely recommend watching that video and getting on this control scheme. Then finally to my movement and my dodging, I do actually just hover quite a lot and I don't really dodge too hard. And the reason for this is, well, it's very intentional. I believe by reacting to the missiles and like rockets that come towards you, you're much less predictable than if you're already in some sort of dodging motion. Think of it, if you're swaying side to side in a very consistent pattern, the person shooting you, if they're good enough, can read that pattern and they will hit you almost every single time. I mean, this kind of stuff happened a lot in Battlefield 4. If you had a very predictable way of flying, you would get hit. And just by hovering and then reacting to what's coming towards you, you're very, very unpredictable. Sure, if they're close enough, then they're going to hit you regardless. But that's why you play mid-range. That's why you play long-range. You can actually see the missiles coming in and then you can dodge them. So that is definitely how I recommend flying. And even with infantry as well, it kind of applies. 
not as much in Battlefield, but in a lot of games that have, let's say, a, uh, a higher time to kill, like Quake or like Apex, if you're like jumping around when you're moving, the jump is a very predictable action because it's the same every single time. It's up and it's down. Whereas if you stay on the ground and strafe side to side in an unpredictable way, you're much harder to hit. So that definitely carries over to the helicopter in this game. And I like to try to stay unpredictable by only moving a little bit when I'm shooting. And then when I see that missile come in, I'll do what I have to do to dodge it. Now what you saw there is another thing you can do. And you can definitely shoot these TV missiles. I've been TV quite a lot since the update. I mean, TVs are very, very strong at the moment. And this update has not changed that. But now you can actually shoot the TV missile as it's coming towards you. This is definitely an advanced strategy and don't use it to supplement dodging. But if you can consistently shoot the missiles that's coming towards you, you don't even need a dodge. That's the beauty of it. I've shot down two, three TV missiles coming at me at once. You can make it work with these mini guns. They are absolutely just insanely strong at shooting those TVs. Now for positioning, I think it's very similar to Battlefield 4. I mean, the scout helicopter is very squishy. It's not actually very hard to kill at all. A lot of things can one-shot it. A lot of things can instantly just melt it down like AA. You have to be careful. You also have aircraft that can push you at any time. And in this game, if someone gets the jump on you and they're a decent pilot, they'll almost always kill you. So you have to be worried about a lot of different threats. I mean, that AA right there, for example, is a good player. I know that for a fact. And because of that, I've actually been positioning myself pretty much on the opposite side of the map to him. Because despite me having repairs and a uh, Liz on the side seat, I just can't beat that AA in a one-on-one. -on -one. He should really win those. So I'm not going to fight him. I'm just going to run the hell away because I know that's actually a good player. And if he wants to push me, that's fine. If he pushes me, he's going to die because I have teammates and tanks. I have the Liz on the side seat and I'll have two AGMs. So more or less with the AA, just play on the opposite side of the map to it. And in general, you want to be playing as far back as you can where enemies are still present. So if the enemies aren't on your back flag and you have plenty of targets there, why would you push further? I mean, this match right here, I've got pretty much over five kills per minute and I've been playing on the back flag and the middle flags pretty much all the time. I don't have to fly to their side of the map. There's no need for it. I'm just going to get myself killed by doing that. You want to sweep through the map from your side of the map to their side and only ever go on their side of the map when you have everything else capped behind you. Another thing is learning the different points of cover and good farm spots. So on this map, this C flag here is actually really good. As long as you can keep them away from being behind you, you can play at this wall, peek over the wall, get a kill or two, then go back down, and you almost never even need to use your flares. I mean, they're going to stinger you. You just dip behind the wall again like this, and then I know where the stingers came from, and I can kill them later. I mean, unfortunately, that guy peeks me with the RPG, but you guys get the point. I've been doing it for most of this game, and you can get a lot of kills just by learning the good farm spots. I'm not going to give them all away yet. I mean, you guys will just have to watch my videos and observe how I play as I use this Nightbird a lot more. But now you can definitely have that style of choosing a nice little spot to farm from and just absolutely beaming people across the map. Definitely takes some practice, but it's a play style that pays off heavily. Now for another thing I've changed in my Nightbird gameplay, it's using the zoom a lot. So I actually zoom in for most of my kills and I don't really see the reason not to do it. So before the zoom wasn't really as good because the spread was just so unpredictable. And honestly, it felt like it made it even worse. But since playing the update, I've been playing with zoom a lot more and I like it so much that I actually change it so I have toggle zoom instead of hold. So what you're seeing right here is what I do a lot. Like I'll just sneak around, get into a good position, toggle my zoom on and I'll just farm until my miniguns overheat. And you can get so many kills and be so accurate with the zoom. And especially now with the overheat coming in a lot quicker, you want to make sure every shot counts. And I think zoom is a great way to do this. So I'd heavily recommend trying it out if you weren't using it before. And even in 1v1s as well, I think zoom is actually a huge advantage. So now that I've explained a bunch of the tips and the style of play that I have with the helicopter now, I'm going to put it into practice with this match and explain what I'm doing. So right now, once again, they are kind of trying to take that middle objective. And that is really, really important for me to protect. Because if they actually get spawned off that, they can push us into base and it becomes a lot harder to fly. So I'm looking at all the entrances to outside of the map. So this door here, the gate on the right and also on C, and I'm just making sure that no one gets through them. So right now, I'm going to go and flank around towards C and see if I can pick up some kills there. I get locked, try to look for the lock and flare and kill as many people as I can. If I get a lot of kills here, I will stay, but if I don't get all of these, then I'm going to have to run away. I decided that this is probably enough kills, so I'm going to stay here and use this little nook in the corner for cover. 
there's only a couple places where they can actually attack me from. So I wouldn't actually probably do this with the old Nightbird, but with the new one, I trust it enough where I can play this aggressive style and make it work. Now I've got my flares back. It's just simple farming. And we're going to get behind cover again. And we have this little nook. We're controlling it pretty well. And I should be able to hold down C from here. All I have to do is watch for these guys on the desert behind me and make sure they don't get up on the roof. Once again, just kind of playing in third person to spot out my enemies. And then when I see people, go straight into first person, zoom in and take advantage of these accurate miniguns. By this point, I've cleared a lot of enemies on this C1 flag, and unfortunately, my team just isn't really anywhere to be seen. I don't know why they're not pushing up on this. They're just kind of doing their own thing. But this map is really confusing, and it plays a lot like Rogue Transmission on BF4, where a lot of the time, your team will just deathmatch on their back flag that has the massive building, because it's fun. It's like a fun deathmatch zone. Everyone's just going to go there and fight it out. Anyways, still a working C1, just trying to get as many kills as I can, and... Just using little nooks like this is a really good way to play. It looks really unsafe, but as long as you know where you can get shot from and you keep those areas clear, it's actually pretty survivable. I mean, this game right here is one of my best games in the Nightbird in a long time. I think it's a 98 and 0, and I did it all pretty aggressively. I didn't sit back the whole game. Anyways, now I've noticed that they've captured our back flag, and it's really important to stop them from doing this. They definitely have some people up on the tower, so I'll try to kill that guy parachuting from the tower. Gonna have a look towards it, and see if I can get this Sundance. Just a little bit too hard to get that kill. And I'm gonna see if I can just chase down the people who are jumping off the tower, because I don't want any back caps to occur. Since there doesn't seem to be many people on our back flag though, I don't really have to clear it. I think it's already pretty much clear. It's just down to my team now to capture that one. I notice there's a bunch of friendlies roughly around this objective though, so I'm going to try to clear it out as well. Once again though, I can't really flare and then sit forward. I have to go back to the back flag if I'm in a flare. There's another guy on the roof there. I'm going to try to clear him out and then once I clear him out, I get access to this nook again which I am free to hide in if I want to. Doesn't seem like I'm going to need it though. We actually have C1 now. Since there's no wildcats on the map that I can tell, I'm getting pretty aggressive here. Get hacked out of nowhere. That is actually a bug that affects the Nightbird quite frequently. You really can't do much against it, and sometimes it will straight up get you killed. In this case, I got lucky though. And I just have this C1 nook to myself. I have the wall if I want it. And I'm just going to get a little bit more aggressive because I know if I have to, I can flare and fall back to the wall. And I'll be fine. So, trying to get a bit aggressive here. Kill that vehicle. Kill the guy that bailed out of it. Well, at least try to. Didn't hit all my shots there, which is alright. And I see another guy, but I'm going to need to get to the wall just so I have some cover. And there's also this night bird pushing me. As you can see, I'm using zoom in the 1v1. But I have flared and I really can't afford to take the fight there. I would rather bring it to somewhere where I know I can control the fight, which is right here. So if he pushes me now, I'm pretty confident I'll win. Especially that I have a lock onto him with a soft land. Not that I would really use it up close anyway. You're better off just using miniguns. Kill that guy before the fight starts because I know he's just sitting behind this wall. And he hits a lot of shots. He's really close, so I'm not using zoom. At this range, I won't use it. But anything much further than this, and I will be using the zoom. And I engage my targets a long way away now with the Nightbird. Uh, before, you would want to wait till you're pretty close so you can make sure you get the kill without them running away. Now you have so much accuracy and damage per second that you can engage from a long distance and still get the kill. And there you have it. There's a 98 and 0 gameplay. Hope you guys all enjoyed the game. Let me know what you think of this Nightbird. In my opinion, it's absolutely insane and it feels very, very rewarding to play. With all that said though, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.